But we're filming in the middle of the day today, so hopefully it's not too noisy from next door's music, because the song they're playing at the minute is crap. Sometimes it's good songs, which would be nice for the podcast, but other times it's not. This isn't very good. We do need a theme tune. We've got a theme tune? Have we? Well, we've got a kind of a jingle. I don't think we're going to fault the royalties for this, though. I wouldn't want to pay the royalties for this. Hope that's not how it works. (laughs) (laughs) Hopefully it's, like, quiet enough that nothing picks it up and gets, like, copyrighted, uh, like, (laughs) cancelled. It should be be fine. I'm sure it will be. It'll be fine. And it's quite sunny. There's a apparently there's a heat wave coming, so we might get some good diving. Hopefully, yeah. I've been itching to get out. Well, we need to get out because I've just spied over there. That where's that come from? That shiny product. That's come from Apex. And I assume we're going to talk about that. Yes, we will be. Yeah. But um, I've not seen that before, so that's obviously for test. Yep. So we need to go and test it. Yeah, I need to get in the water again. It's very shiny. The rain's been putting us off, so hopefully we get some sunshine. Yeah, I might have to go up the coast if it's been raining too much. Mm-hmm. If the river's kicking out. We shall see. Hopefully summer's about to start. <laughs> oh, it's about time, it's like mid-June. It's not like we're halfway through the air and we've got to go <laughs> back on to dark nights, but you know. Oh, isn't it like the longest night? Like, sometime now? Uh, it'll be this week, it's usually 21st or something uh, like that, isn't so it? So dark nights are coming back in. Mm-hmm. So, which episode will do? Uh, <laughs> six? Yeah, I think so. I think you're going to have to start keeping a spreadsheet about what we talk about as well. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, we're just going to go through and start talking about the same products Yeah, repeat again. myself. Yeah. Well, shall we get started? We shall. As well. So what's your bubble trouble for this week? There's been a big oil spill in Singapore. Has it? I haven't yeah. heard anything about this. So it was just very briefly in the news. It caught my attention because it was Sentosa, you know, like where like <laughs> yeah. the Universal Studios and stuff is. There's like, it's weird in Singapore. It's, it's a weird, like, country. There's oh. this like little, is it like an island, the Sentosa bit? There's this on the bottom of the of the country. There's like this little separate bit and it's like, um, yeah. how would you describe it? Like a resort. Like, yeah. it's like got all Universal and like leisure stuff. Yeah. So it's a weird place. Anyway, the, the fact to close parts of that because um, a, two boats crashed into each other and one of them was an oil tanker. So now there's a massive oil spill. They've closed the beaches and stuff because they're just slicks everywhere. The because they just push it under the carpet, isn't it? So I don't know what's... Like, I haven't heard any more about what's happening to the reefs around there. Um, but I'm just kind of hoping that it doesn't float over towards Tiamen. Because yeah. remember that time where we were, like, driving along to, I don't know, just go and to some dive site and there was all these weird like brown balls in the ocean ah that was that's when they clean out the bilge tanks that was, at sea. yeah but um illegal but to do it well yeah and with we were like what are those weird brown balls and you picked it up and your hand was just like covered in yeah. sludge <laughs> and, and so we were picking them up like from the sea and then we went to the beach at coral island and the whole place was just and it was starting to melt the balls were starting to yeah. melt so it was turning into like oil or whatever it was like back yeah, again in the salt water has a weird reaction it makes it solid yeah so you can scoop it out with a net in the yeah. water but as soon as it hits the land then it goes to actual oil yeah so i hope that's not going to make its way to well anywhere i hope it doesn't damage anything but especially our hmm. old home fingers crossed what's your bubble trouble well you've you've touched on it in a in a couple of podcasts so far i think and there's been a few comments sort of around on the videos and stuff that we've been posting but it's basically about like the oct- it's like an octo rant isn't it it's like where should it be what color should it be and everybody like likes to argue about yeah. it it's it's weird because it just doesn't does it really matter no as far as i'm concerned as long as you've got a secondary in my opinion it should be good quality secondary it noises when people buy these cheaper ones i know they're trying to save money but there's yeah. an emergency and you need something you, <laughs> you want to rake <laughs> so there's there's some like that uh, the work upside down and downwards but they're just cheap crap unbalanced things that are more likely to free flow than do anything else i mean yes technically the work and pass all the standards and that but you wouldn't use that as your primary so it shouldn't be your secondary yeah so as long as it's a decent second stage that you can rely on in an emergency where you and your buddy are stressed or even yourself stressed yeah then that's fine. Yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, as long as you and your buddy know how to use it and they're comfortable with the system, fine. 
Well, that's the thing. It's like, because you go through your buddy checks, that's one of the things that you look at on each other. Like, where, if you yeah. need to share air, like, where is it? How do I use it? This is it. This is where complacency kicks in and people don't do the buddy checks properly together or you quite often see people just get buddied up together the day and yeah. don't, don't even know each other's names and stuff like that. You've well, got all sorts of good like that going on, which doesn't help. The thing for me is that in a real out of air situation where your buddy's panicking because they're out of air it's not it's not a nice place to be they, they don't, you don't think straight you don't like you know run th- in the moment you don't run through your training and think, oh excuse me i'm out of air can we share air you don't you don't do that yeah. what you do is you go for the one that's in the person's mouth because you're in a panic state you're like i need air you take it out of their mouth i've been there i've been that panicking diver running out of air and i wasn't thinking and i took it out of the person's mouth i didn't look Have for you? the yeah i've did. had the story uh, it was a long time ago um, and I wasn't actually out of air but my gauge was doing something weird so I didn't realise at the time right. so my gauge was bouncing so obviously I hadn't turned my tank on properly was looking at my gauge going what the hell's going on here didn't understand it started to freak out a bit went to my buddy and I took it out of his mouth like didn't go for his octo mm. so that's that's why I like the long hose set up because yeah. it, it, when we're diving long hose, the one that's in your mouth is the one that you donate if somebody needs it. So if they, if they want to rip it out of my mouth, well, take it. You can have like two meters to go away and sort yeah. yourself out. I've got my back up right here, like on my chest. I'll just put, I'll put that in while I get sorted out. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's long hose all the way. Yeah. There's loads of arguments backwards and forwards between them both. I mean, you always hear like long hose are, it's dangerous, blah, blah, blah. You're going to strangle yourself. Or... <laughs> well, one of the things that we've, because obviously we teach on long hose we do everything on long hose bubble makers and everything on long hose but like a comment that we've heard even from the agencies and stuff is like oh well if you teach them on a long hose what they're going to do when they go on holiday and they're on like a regular setup Mm -hmm. like well the same thing that they do when they come to us from regular along we'll give them an orientation to show them how to use it so that that, that argument doesn't wash yeah there's there's loads of different ones and there's ways around all of them yeah um and you could flip them arguments for the short hose set up with the yellow octo so yeah it's one of them one of the other things um rule one of the other rules is that it has to be in the triangle between your ribs and your chin yep. i kind of agree with that and yeah. a, lo- a long hose is in that yes and um, most other uh, pretty much every setup i've seen would be that mm-hmm. like you know from the the standard agencies bezacks tend to be on the other side some of them do, some of them don't. Yeah, but yeah. there's some, one set up where it comes off the other side, but it's still in that kind yeah, it's of space. Still in that triangle, yeah. And then I suppose the other rule is that it has to be yellow. What do you think about that? <sighs> the thing is, it's meant to be easily identifiable. So everyone's gone with, right, okay, so that means it needs to be yellow. And yellow is good and clear and easy to see. So yeah, I kind of agree with that a little bit. But it's not end of the world. If it's there and it's easy to identify, and like we said, most likely in a panicking situation, someone's going to probably grab the one out of your mouth in anyway, yeah. not the yellow one that's tucked away and hidden. Yeah. So that's the thing that really doesn't work with octo hose is people don't understand it. And a lot of beginner training is, oh, he has an octo. That's what you would donate to your buddy. Let's rehearse this once. Maybe it's once again at open water doing an out of air share with your buddy, and that's it. So then going forward, people forget about them. And they don't know how to store them, how to clip them on, especially rental gear that has a proper system. And quite often not, I see people shove them in the back. Yeah. In the pocket, in the back. Or like mouth mouthpiece in the pocket. Yeah, and yeah. they can't reach them, they don't know what's going on. Yeah. Free flow and flailing around them, how many videos you see and people, <laughs> octos flailing, yeah. dragging on the reef and yeah. all sorts. So that's what I really don't like about the system. And technically the correct way of improving that is training in skills rather than anything wrong with equipment. What do you mean? Well, just actually teaching people. So the biggest advantage of the long hose is the fact when we're teaching any skills with the reg, we're teaching them to change to the backup. So yeah. it clicks in the diver's brain. I've got two second stages. Yeah. I use both. I test both. I play with both. I use both. Any skills or problems, I put that one in. Right. So now in that form of training in the diver's head, they've got the muscle memory and they're thinking, right, I'm using both of these, I have a benefit of both of these, yeah. and that kind of improves the well, diver's mentality for it all. Well, that's a good point, really, because that's one of the things that persuaded me to change over to long hose, because mm-hmm. if you if you think about when you're teaching somebody to do reg recovery on a regular, like, mm-hmm. normal setup, 
So you take a breath, take it out. You're blowing bubbles all the time when you're trying to find it. And like even when you're demonstrating it as an instructor, because you try to do it really slow, and you're like, they're running out, there's yeah. no more bubbles. And yeah. then it's it, that in itself is quite panic. It never crossed my mind to to switch yeah. to my backup. Uh, 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 that's the most simple thing to do. And obviously, like with long hose, that's you're taught to do that. Yeah. But it's never talked about on regular setup. It's just like one of those things where it gets ingrained. This is the way we've always done it. Like we'll teach it this way, even though there's a better way of doing it. But this is the way we do it, and you yeah. just get stuck in that in that mentality, and you don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I never never even crossed my mind to think outside the box and think, oh, how can I make this more comfortable for my students to yeah. perform? So I mean, like, there's nothing wrong with the yellow hose. I'm saying the yellow hose, but what everyone identifies it is so it's a meter instead of the long hose, which is two meters. Yeah, you could still use. The foundations of the long hose with that one meter hose yes so you could still practice right there's something wrong with my second stage i'm going to i've lost my first stage out my mouth right that's uh, <laughs> your primary second stage. i've lost my primary <laughs> second stage out my mouth yeah, yeah. then i'm going to get my octo and put that in rather than try to worry about this yeah. or whatever it is and, and how many times have like students or divers or whatever have had an issue with their with their primary let's say the mouthpieces come off we talked yeah, about yeah. last yeah. and and they're, they're panicking they're coming to you and, uh, and we would give them their um <laughs> their backup rather than them yeah. thinking oh i've got a spare one because you don't you don't drill it like that on a regular setup yeah so that's definitely a benefit of long hose so Technically, it's not the equipment set up fault, it's the whole philosophy and approach between the two. Yeah. And the long hose system comes from DIR, which comes from the tech background. Yes, people have got slightly different opinions, and but pretty much within the tech community, DIR is the well accepted and standard setup and yeah. considered the correct way of doing it. So that's everyone in twin set, side mount, pretty much that is considered the norm. And they all the have like the it. same gear. Yeah. The, the exact same kit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's starting to get a bit too far, but we've all kind of agreed within that community who are doing, I would say, more serious diving, like they go down depths, there's more likely have issues with free flow out of their emergencies, yeah. and they're saying this system is the one that works and benefits. But in recreational diving, we're kind of saying, yeah, but no. Yeah, this is the way. Why this is the way we've always done it. Why change it? Yeah. So all right, okay, I kind of agree. It's it's there. It's been for that long and but that doesn't mean that there's not better like i'm always thinking of better ways of doing things and when i get presented with something that i think has advantages and i change the way i do things to you know to reflect it personally i don't see why people are making such a boundary for it to come into recreational that's the issue i've got with it yeah i've got no problem the long hose system i've got no problem with the octos i've got the problem with the people who were making a big hoo-ha about the long hose being used for recreational yeah why because they've never tried it, I guess. Well, like, a lot of these people are tech divers who use the... Oh, well, then surely they would yeah. know how good it is then and see the benefits of it. That customer, use the person who was telling them, oh, no, you need to change uh, yeah. to Octo to join our club. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. Was a tech diver who does a twin set. Okay. I'm just just stuck, stuck, I guess. You're just stuck in your ways and not... That's just the way yeah. it's always been done, isn't it? So if you want to use long holes, as long as you trained and you know what you're doing know how you use it and you're comfortable with the system i don't see any issue with it mm. the caveat i've got with that is all right i understand if there's a whole group of divers and none of them are using long hose you're the only person using long hose in that situation if i was a less experienced diver i'll probably say right okay i'll change the doctor well i've done that before as well if i've done like an idc and they wanted to do it on regular then i'll change mine to regular as well yeah. It just depends on the situation, doesn't it? Yeah, so I mean, if everyone's on one system, it there is a big benefit of everybody's being on the same yeah. system. It just reduces any kind of human error or anything, getting confused or yeah. anything like that. So in that scenario, I can kind of understand. But if everyone's experienced divers and capable of handling it, quick, this is how it works, this is how it operates, should be more than enough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if it was like a brand new advanced open water diver on long hose going into a club where all them are on short hose. I can see the mm, I suppose, the yeah. merits of them changing to this, conforming to the same system. Yeah. I think, like, I don't, maybe it's just me, because I always want to try different things and find the mm-hmm. thing that's best suited for me. And if somebody yeah. said, you're not doing that, I'd be like, mm, are, you, are you sure? Like, are, are you, I would rebel against that. <laughs> I would just rebel. There's nothing wrong with the yellow hose. Except no, I like to have two black ones. <laughs> I, I, prefer, I prefer the long hose system. 
It's yes. what I'm comfortable in. It's yes. what I use. I know it works. There's lots of benefits to it, which override the yellow. But I'm not going to say no the other way. Yeah. Where people are like, oh, no, if you divorce, you must be long. It's what you're used to and what works for you. Yeah. Well, that's that's it. That's, you know, we're saying what we think. But we should do a poll. Like, <laughs> what do you? where do you stand on the, the octo debate? Yeah. I mean, one of them I've heard is, oh, if there is an emergency, you want the person to be dead close to you, so that you I, want the long, you want, want the them. short hose, so you can put that in and take control. Not if they're panicking, I don't want the things to they're going to climb all over us and get away. But then, <laughs> for two lesser experienced divers, maybe that is a little bit better. Mm. But this is our bias of being instructors, where, right, okay, we're dealing with a panic diver, I'll rather give you a long hose and have space to be able to move and yeah. I'll just grab you somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> um, the amount of times I've had divers clutching and digging the nails and <laughs> arms into us yeah. and stuff and you kind of get your inflator hose and stuff. Yeah. So I much prefer the long hose and stuff. Yeah. That doesn't dictate how close you get. The length of the hose doesn't dictate. No, Whereas it just gives you an option. Yeah, it gives you the option. Yeah. So you can go near and hold on to them or you can keep a distance and you can swim behind each other, you can move mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. So that there's lots of advantages. Whereas with the short hose, you've only got one option. In your face. In your face. <laughs> yeah. And as soon as you move, you're nearly ripping it out the heart. Yeah. yeah. Mouth. So, like I say, you hear these arguments, and sometimes I just think you just, uh, you're just using something just to. Just to have an argument. Just, just, just. Either just to have an argument, or you just don't want them to use that system. You want them to use your system, which is fine. Just say that. Yeah. We're all on this system. This is what we're comfortable in. We really prefer it if you use our system. Right, no problem. Yeah. Rather than just coming out with a load of fucking bollocks. <laughs> which is yeah. a lot of it is. <laughs> you can kind of see the point for about two seconds and you're like, but wait a minute. Divers, the like to. Well, I mean, I'm, we're sitting here doing exactly the same thing. We're, <laughs> we're sitting here putting our opinion across. Yeah, I know, but at the same time, there's lots of people who've come down with us in the Bizite left hand system with the yeah. Octo system. Um, I've even had divers like in side mount with only one meter hoses instead of a long long hose. I've had people with J valves, yeah. <laughs> face masks, <laughs> all sorts. As long as it works for you. Yeah. And then we just adapt to that and we learn about you yeah. know, how to how yeah. to help them, how to deal with it and then just adapt with it. Yeah. I say whatever floaty bubble, <laughs> go with it. Just go out and dive <laughs> and enjoy fun. yourself. <laughs> and stop stop bickering. Yeah, stop bickering. Go out and dive and enjoy yourself. Yeah. And as long as everyone's comfortable and safe, that's all that matters. Well said. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready for your first diver question? Diver question. So Nigel was inquiring about uh, swivels on regulators. Yeah. So what's like? What is it? What's it for? Is it any good? Should I get one? Yeah. You ready for another? Can we just cut the chase and say whatever floats your boat? <laughs> you use it if you want to. <laughs> Why don't you start start by saying what it is, like what right. it's for? Hose comes in the second stage. It's quite a fixed point. So as the second stage is sitting in your mouth, sometimes people get it where it's kind of pulling uh -huh. to the side, or the weight of the regulator is kind of making the mouthpiece sit in the mouth uncomfortable. Right. Um, or the one which they were asking about is because of the very strong current. Right. was kind of causing the mountain to really bite down the mouthpiece to stop the second stage falling out. And I mean, that's a ridiculously strong, <laughs> strong current. Yeah. So what you could potentially do is you can put either an elbow or a swivel on. So inside mount, we quite often put a 90 degree elbow, yeah. which is just a fixed elbow. It just helps orientate the second stage a bit more comfortable with the hose. And it just works on the side mount system yeah. with the left and right and stuff. So some people use that on tech dive and it just changes the hose route and a bit more comfortable, which is Fine, it works, and there's a valid reason for having it. Um, now, the downfall of putting, as soon as we put anything on, we're increasing failure points because we're adding more O-rings, which technically, if everything's serviced and well-maintained, is absolutely fine. And then you've also got to think, as air kind of flows down a tunnel, as soon as you're putting a bend in, you're kind of altering the direction, which is going to have an impact on the flow and the venturi forces inside and stuff like that. So it is kind of putting a restriction on that airflow. Right. Like, enough that you'd be able to feel it? No, not really. Right. If, but if we start putting lots in, right. then yes. It's and I suppose cool. if you're, like, doing crazy deep, like... Yeah. Biggest thing with these is, and this is where we start going into all the legal mumbo-jumbo. So technically, a first and second stage made by a manufacturer is sent off to get tested, and it gets tested in the 
blah, 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 and then it gets that CE certification yeah. to say, yes, this is safe, it conforms to these standards, blah, blah, blah. Now, if you change anything to that setup, this is no longer have that CE certification, conforms to this blah, blah, blah. So putting a swivel in or an elbow in? So potentially putting a swivel in, putting an elbow in, even changing the hose to a different manufacturer's hose. Like a MyFlex one or something. Yeah, or changing the different length of hose. So you're now changing the airflow between that first and second stage, which is going to give different breathing stats, blah, 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 within yep. CE stuff. Right. So the main thing with changing the hose is one length, but also different manufacturers have got different bore inside of the hoses, mm. which can all have implications. So for the average normal diver... It doesn't matter. doesn't matter. <laughs> for schools and instructors... It's not, it's not dangerous. Yeah. It works. Go for it. Yeah. The problem is within Europe and particularly in UK, we, as professionals, as anyone in employment, paid, blah, 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 have to conform to HSE standards. Yep. And as part of HSE standards, you the equipment be... has to be CE certified right. and you can't deviate from that. So, for instance, if you have an Apex regulator, technically, you can only use Apex hoses on that regulator. Now, Apex, I know for a fact, have tested their setup with a long hose and it's all certified and they've got a 90 degree elbow, which has also been tested within that. Right. That is fine. Yeah, but f like pros and schools and stuff, mm -hmm. like, okay, but for normal divers, like, it doesn't matter, does it? Well, normal divers can do whatever they want, really. Right. So a normal diver could, if they wanted to, put a swivel or an elbow and everything's cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so... Going into that, and the reason why I kind of said all that before is because Apex don't make a swivel. Oh. So the there is swivels on the market. The from various other manufacturers. I think Omni Swivel's the most popular and most reputable one. And all the swivel is, is it's a ball joint. So that gives you kind of a lot of movement on the second stage. Yeah, and you can kind of pose it where you want yeah, it. Yeah, so you it? can kind of alter it and move yeah. it. So this does help reduce jaw fatigue. Um, it stops you bouncing biting down on the mouthpiece as much. That's not me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it kind of just sits a little bit more comfortable. So it exists there. It does a job. I would probably say, me personally, I wouldn't bother with it. It's had another failure point. It's another service point. So you have to, there is O-rings inside that have to be changed and maintained. And that is generally the main thing, reasons within the kind of tech community that don't really like them, because it is introducing extra failures. Right. Also, what I just found when I did use one, it just added a lot of weight. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, it just added that extra bit of weight on that second So does that not make it more uncomfortable well, then? Well, that's what I think. It's kind of, it makes it more uncomfortable and then it's helping that. So the benefit you're getting is kind of counteracting it. Yeah. So you can pose it where it's comfortable, but then it's like heavy. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it does help in terms of like how the hose sits and pulls it out. So, you know, when sometimes like you move and then the hose just feels like it's pulling out your mouth, mm. the swivel does get rid of that. I, I mean, I can see that on like a side mount or a tech setup where that hose is shorter anyway, but if you're on a, like a regular normal yeah. length reg hose and yeah. I don't really... I don't, I don't even know how if that would make it nicer on a normal reg hose. I think it would add in an extra kink. You'd have to try it. Put it in and have a look. <laughs> See what you think. <laughs> if you think you're going to get benefit and comfort from it, then yeah. feel free to go for it. Yeah. It's hard to see without trying it yourself. I've tried it myself. I didn't like it. On a normal yeah. length reg hose? Yeah. Mm. It wasn't for me. Just didn't see the benefit. But I understand why some people do have them and prefer them. Go nuts. Um, so I think like where they were and they had crazy strong currents most of the dive pros did have them just because it made it more comfortable for them and right. reduce some of the issues they had when you know pinnacle diving where you get them crazy currents do you know what would be even better what long hose yeah <laughs> they need, they wouldn't need one pretty much i <laughs> but that, that that's crazy talk <laughs> crazy talk so next question comes from quite a lot of divers customers uh, because it's regarding the website we don't have much stuff in stock as you look at the boxes because our podcast studio is pretty much in the stock room so we can see all of the boxes and all the stuff that we've yeah. got we do try and keep all the knickknackies and bits and bobs and yeah. smaller stuff we try and stock. keep as much as we can afford to keep in stock yeah. we kind of keep expensive things like dry suits and, and that kind of thing in stock but we try and keep as much as we can yep a small operation and cash is king. Cash is king. <laughs> cash is king. Um, so yes, we're not one of these online retailers who've got everything sitting on the shelf ready to go. 
Yeah, and we're also not one of these online retailers who lies about it. Say, oh yeah, I've got that in stock, but then you order it and they're actually, oh no, we haven't got it in stock. It'll be such and such days until I can get it here. Yeah. Which brings us to the question that's been asked. So when something's in stock, when we've, we've got it in stock, it'll say in stock on the website and you can buy it. And then depending on what time of day you place your order, we'll get it out like next day delivery and it'll be there as quick as possible. Yeah. If it's not in stock, then it'll say that it's back ordered and we try and be as transparent as possible about how long it'll take to get to you. And because we've got like a million different suppliers, everybody's time, that sort of, that, that, that delay time is, yeah. is different. It would be nice if we had a system where we could automatically update. Yeah exactly what's in stock with the suppliers and blah 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 it's, it's hard isn't it because some of the suppliers you have work. to email to find out some yeah. other suppliers have got like live data you can see it on the website it just yeah it just depends some of the stuff's coming from sweden so it's you know like there's a bit of a tight time delay on getting it here but the point that uh, the answer that i'm trying to give is that we try and make it obvious how long it's going to be so if it's not in stock It'll say available for back order, and then on that little blurb, there's a link, and you can go and look at that link, and it'll give you an idea of how long, depending on the brand that you're choosing, how long it'll take to get to you. Um, so then you can order it if you're happy with that time. You can order it, um, and then Jim gets in touch with the the people, the manufacturers, gets it pla- the order place, and then as soon as we get it, we ship it straight out to you as well. But we try and keep you updated like as much as possible. So what happens basically is. You put your order in, Jim places the order, finds out how long it's going to take. He'll then send you like a personalized video message with an update of how long it's going to take. If it's like different to what you expected, you can cancel the order. We'll give you a full refund. If you're fine with it, then cool. We'll keep you updated as soon as it gets here. You'll get another message and then blah, blah, blah. Yeah, um, what, what we don't do is say, oh, yeah, we've got it in stock. We'll give it to you next day. And then you buy it and you get an email going, oh, actually, we haven't got it in stock and it's going to take three weeks to get here. We, we don't do that. It'll be, we'll make it as obvious as we can what the crack is with it. But if my stock count's correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, need, you need to do it at the stock count. You need yeah. to get that done. Yeah, I need to do it at the stock take. If you're not sure or you're not confident or blah, 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 just drop us a message. Yeah, no to bother. Yeah, I've got absolutely no problem. I'll find out, track down nearly all the suppliers now. I can almost instantly find out yeah. there's not huge delays and find out whether something's available or not. Yeah. Um, and then we can find out a time frame from there. It works. I think there's a big benefit of that because you're then getting fresh stock straight from the manufacturer. Yeah. You're not getting something that's been sitting on the shelf yeah. for months. It, it, Dusty. Yeah. It might not work for some people if they need it for like a, a trip in the next few days or like if, they're, if they need it quick. That, like yeah. we, we understand that like, we haven't got it in stock and you need it fast and we know that you're going to go like to the place where you can get it straight away but um yeah if you fancy giving us a punt and ex- a, punt. a punt and experiencing our sort of customer service and you've got time to wait if it is on back order then yeah we'd love to love to sort your order out for you what your product of the week <laughs> this shiny thing that has appeared should we just change this podcast to James Talks About Torches? <laughs> you are such a magpie for torches, like. You have, have you bought this? No. Are you no. sure? Yes, it's a demo. It better be, because this looks very expensive. It is 1400-ish. And what is it? What is the name of this? This is the Apex Luna X. Well, if I can say from a design point of view... What? What's this? This doesn't look like it's complete. This looks like it's a bit missing. <laughs> that's very, that's very small. Look at this. But, it's nice though, but, isn't it? Well, it is, but that, that to me looks like there's something missing. And like I would smack it off, I don't know, the top of a cave or something and it would just fall off. It's a light, not a hammer. I don't know, but it's like, I don't know, it just, I mean, I can see now we're looking at it upside, there's, there's two screws in this, it's never going to come off. But it just... This is British I, I, engineering in all its glory. I guess I'm just used to seeing like another big chunk on the back of that. So what's the difference yes. between this and some of the other types of torches that I've seen? Why is it just that front bit? Because that's all it needs. I don't know. Well, why is the other one's got like a massive cylinder thing on the back <laughs> of it? <laughs> Most of the the uh, the umbilical torches are about that wide. I would probably say this is just because this is new tech. Right. You kind of paying for it. Yeah, I know what you mean. So the way they're laid out. I don't actually know. I'm not a torch manufacturer. I don't know if that's to do with like heat sinks and because I mean originally it was a torch, wasn't it? So by the time you fit the bulb in and then all the electronics and then right. 
So, because it's now like super duper LED stuff. Yeah, uh, because it's super super duper LED. So this is made by a well-known British torch manufacturer in another industry. I will not um, say the industry. Well, if you're it's, a cyclist, you'll it's know. Cyclist, isn't it? Bike yeah, yeah. torches. Right, and that is it straight away. So these are proven and work. Um, yeah, and this is kind of Apex's version of it. So originally, I think it's the Goodman handle is why you're judging it. Oh, uh, why? Because this Goodman handle is actually for the the Luna torch, which is a torch with a battery, uh, without this, right. so non umbilical. So right. basically, they brought out an umbilical but used the same Goodman handle. I mean, I've I've never actually used an umbilical torch before, but this just does not work for me. <laughs> look, at, no. look at the size of that on my hand. Like, I, can, I know with you, your big clompers and your dry mm -hmm. gloves, and, like, that'd be perfect for you. But for me, like, what the hell am I going to... I can't, I can't, like... You would be able to... It is adjustable. So you can make it smaller um, to grip your hand But better. even wide, the wideness of it? I know. I, know. I think there needs to be a girl version. A girl version? Mm, smaller hands version. I think this is beautiful. <laughs> This is not beautiful. It just looks wrong. I like the colour. And also how light it is. Oh, actually, that is very light for an umbilical torch. Yeah. Um, and then you've got the benefit on this one. You can take this off. So you can adjust this if you want to change the orientation. So the beauty of that is this is now compatible for any kind of side mount, side mount, side mount twins, back mount, yeah. strap in the cylinder. You can orientate it however you want. Right. Whereas normally a lot of the torch manufacturers, you've got to change the cable to a 90 degree cable. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. to, they have thought about that side of things. I think that's very, very nice battery. Um, <laughs> if you're into that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, just look at it. But well, can I, but just from a colour point of view, those oranges are different. Yeah. So what's that about? I, right, I'll tell you what. I really like this torch. I really <laughs> like this battery. I'm not a fan of the Goodman handle. Right. So it's the Goodman handle that's the issue. Yeah. I, I can see what they've tried to do. It is nice compared to a lot of Goodman handles on the market in terms of comfort of that. But I don't know. So would this... The balance point feels wrong on me. So I need to get in the water and find out. Would this head fit any Goodman handle? Or is, are those mountain points going to be very specific to... No, it should. Right. You could probably just sort out the Goodman handle. If that was where you inclined. See, that's where it is on all the Apex photos. I think it should be kind of that way. That feels a nicer balance. But I can see why they've done it. They've done that to allow for the wrist. Right. Because... But I don't think that'll dig in with my dry gloves. Right. Yeah. So what's the specs? I mean, we're just slating the colours at the minute. What's the actual specs? Of it? <laughs> I think it's a good kit. Um, How many bore people with it? Uh, it max power is like three thousand three hundred lumens for three hours or something like that. So bright. And then, um, right. So for it lasts three hours. The, the, On like the high power. The max. high power which right. I think is pretty decent. Mm -hmm. Now, the beauty of this is, with it being the LEDs, you can see it's got lots of LEDs in there. <laughs> so, what I'm trying to say is, basically on a lot of other torches, you can have, you can buy a torch and it's just a narrow beam, and then you have to buy a different torch for a wide beam, or you buy a very expensive one, which you adjust, so you can change the beam focus. Right. Whereas this, you can do all that. Right. So you've got, high power medium power low power then you've also got ring so it's just a nice big wide you can have that nice big wide beam with a spot or you can just have the spot and on all three of them powers right and in terms of select are these the buttons so yeah so they don't look like buttons to me so there's just two nice easy buttons there are they all oh, right okay oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> i didn't realize that was the on button <laughs> that just played you yeah. And what we can also say is very intuitive, and easy to use. Is, yeah. No need instructions, just press it and away you go. Um, but what I do really like is that display. Oh, yeah. So that's your runtime? So, yeah. So you can get a nice, clear, easy to use, and it gives you the runtime, and that's a live runtime yeah. as well. And you could use that as a hand warmer as well. <laughs> yeah, probably should turn it off. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you get your runtime there. It also it's got colour coding for the battery life, but it just gives the runtime, which yeah. is more than enough. Like to say, I don't think any other torch on the market has got a live runtime. You're the torch guru. Yeah, there's a few manufacturers. I'm not familiar with their new stuff, um, but certainly from the ones we deal with, they don't have that. They'll have maybe like a colour code 
where like you a know, blinker the, thing. Yeah, yeah. Or you get an it'll give like a, an early warning. So a couple of the torches will kind of dim a little bit, so you know, all right, the battery's on its way. Um, like a get me home type of, yeah. type of feature, but this yeah. actually live tells you exactly how long you've got left, which I think is pretty cool. It's yeah, like I say, it's from a high end manufacturer. Yeah. So in theory. It's less likely to fail, but you're kind of paying for that. Yeah. But also with this being a nice sealed head, it's less likely for a diver to break. So, oh, so you can't like unscrew it and no, get into the gubbins yeah, of it? Yeah, there's it's nothing sealed. getting in the gubbins. There's only really the cable. Right. Um, and the, to charge, just that cable comes off. And like a few of the torches I've seen, they have different size batteries. Mm -hmm. Like, is, can you get different batteries or is it just one? Just one. Yeah. And it is flight safe, blah, 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 so you can travel with it. We'll better get out of diving and test it then. I certainly think it's a nice bit of kit. It wants to be for the price. <laughs> I think they've done well on the price point there. You think? Because the lower torches, I think, are quite expensive. Like the for what they are, like yeah, the do like a non umbilical version of this, and then there's the smaller kind of uh, standard torches. They are, they are pricey, um, which are pricey, but they are sealed units. Mm -hmm. There's no batteries to take out and put away, and it's just. A wet USB charger. There's nothing the diver can break. Right. So that does give you the advantage. If something does break, the manufacturer kind of say, "Oh, well, you did this wrong or that yeah. wrong. It's not. It's broke." And they'll. It's just... definitely a them issue, not a you issue. Yeah, and they'll sort it out for you. Um, whereas this is coming in at, I think it's fourteen eighty or something. The sharks, oh, six hundred or something off the top of my head. But that is a really cheap torch, for what it is. Right. And I love it. I think it does the job and what it needs. But if you want, if you like the high end engineering, compared to most of the Amnites are around that, if not more. Yeah. So it depends what you want. If you just want a good, well made, high end torch that works that's and that's light. all you're going to use it for, that's and it's very light for traveling yeah. and stuff like that, you kind of go wrong with that one, yeah. I think. Um, if budget's more your concern, all right, that's the shark. If you want modularity and things with like heating batteries and stuff like that, and messing about and changing stuff there's the Amnite but I think the Amnite's a bit more expensive if right. I remember rightly and what, just well we're on what's that case this is the case that comes in that's quite nice yeah, nice shazzy case yep. yep we'll get it tested mm -hmm. yes so that's the plan of the videos getting some videos of torches in the water hopefully well that's it we are done for episode 6 I felt, I felt like that went quite smoothly as recording goes like pros. Like pros. <laughs> this is when you put it on the computer and realise something's wrong. <laughs> <Sorry, I'm just laughs> <laughs> <laughs> to re-record it. <laughs> so as always, if you have any questions that you would like to be featured on the podcast, uh, you can send them in to hello at thehonestdiver.com or you can just comment on you know one of the videos. And, you know, we pick everything up. And as always, you would be amazing if you could like, share, comment, review the podcast, send it to all your buddies, get them to listen as well. That would be awesome. It's all about the TikTok love as well, isn't it? Yeah. That, that's your major project at the minute. You're well, I would. With your TikTok. No, I would like to get TikTok it to. Famous. I would like to get it to a thousand so we can do the Red Doctor live stuff. Oh, please, please do. That. <laughs> <laughs> do not like, subscribe, or comment on the honest TikTok. <laughs> we do not want to go live in Red Doctor. <laughs> yes, you do. Oh no. It's happening. I told you it's happening. Oh God. I don't think TikTok's ready for that. I mean, I wouldn't go that far. I don't think there's going to be that many people watching it. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think you're going to become an influencer. No? Well, you can try. We'll try and make some money off it. Pretty niche. Me do makeup tutorials. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway. Yes, let's, uh, let's, let's leave it there. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>